CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. It doesn't seem like that to me. We were like, you know, in 61. Yeah, you're right, Pat. We hate to Hi, everybody. Welcome the Bible to says today. that if you believe in Lord Jesus, that's right. Look, it's like as far as we can see down there. When you turn on the 700 Club, you're watching a program that has been on the air continuously since 1966. It's one of the longest running daily programs in television history. Probably seen more people come to the Lord through CBN than any other organization in the world. But it, it wasn't me, it was God. It was an unbelievable leap of faith for a man who didn't own a TV set to jump into telecommunications. I didn't have any money, but a lot of faith, I suppose. So I got an appointment with David Sarnoff, who was then chairman of the board of RCA, and told him that we needed some help and that we wanted to buy some equipment from him. Well, he looked at me and he said, you don't sound like much of a buyer to me. <laughs> Undaunted by skepticism, Pat bought the equipment he needed from RCA to get the transmitter and camera working. He switched on the transmitter, framed up the camera, and went on the air with his Bible in hand. The inaugural broadcast of the Christian Broadcasting Network made it to the end of the block, and from there, it never stopped. Over the decades, millions on every continent have responded to Christ as Pat speaks directly to viewers. Lord Jesus, that's right, pray with me. Lord Jesus, you know what I've been through. Today, CBN programming is seen in more than 100 nations around the world. Countries once completely closed to the gospel are now new frontiers. What began in Tidewater, Virginia is spanning the globe. All the best human strategies in the world couldn't accomplish that feat. CBN was the first ever to start a Christian television show in their own language. And that has profound implications for the culture. When you show people what Jesus is doing today for people that look like them, talk like them, it's not some far off story that happened 2,000 years ago. I wanted to be part of God's plan, uh, and I think that His plan is for world evangelization and to bring millions to the kingdom, and He's let me be part of it. In 1978, Pat was reading out of the scriptures in Isaiah. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe him? With that biblical mandate, Pat started Operation Blessing. Early on, leaders like President Ronald Reagan took notice. Operation Blessing. They've given nearly two and a half million dollars to more than 8,500 churches. And this money is then matched by the local churches. And the result has been fantastic. Now, Operation Blessing is one of the most trusted charities in the world. A fleet of trucks cross the nation providing hunger relief. Water wells are dug on every continent and orphans are rescued. If a disaster strikes anywhere in the world, like Haiti's earthquake, the Indonesian tsunami, or Hurricane Katrina, Operation Blessing is there with emergency relief. You know, it's funny. Uh, when you're walking with God, you don't have necessarily all these grandiose <laughs> dreams about, about the future. What you have is this is next step, next step, next step, next step, and you just follow where God is telling you, and you put your foot down, and the next foot, and the next, and suddenly, here it all is. Regent University began with 77 graduate students in 1978. Today, over 5,000 scholars are training in the major disciplines. The American Center for Law and Justice was established so that when the rights of religious people are violated, they have a strong advocate in the courts. The American Center for Law and Justice is straightforward. We defend liberty and freedom. And when you defend liberty and freedom and take it as a mandate from God, it's something you do with excellence. And what we do is defend the rights of religious people to engage in free speech, to share their faith in the United States and around the world. Dee Dee Robertson stands in amazement of it all. I have seen more than I ever dreamed I would see. I have done more than I ever dreamed I would do. And it's just been a very exciting life. And working for the Lord is an exciting thing to do. Following His leading and, and doing the things that He wants you to do. The story of their meeting has been told before, but every time Dee Dee tells it, there is still a sparkle in her eye. They met at Yale, 
Pat was studying law and Dee Dee was getting her master's in nursing. Dee Dee says from the first moment she met Pat, there were sparks, real sparks, and a small fire. Well, that's kind of an exciting tale. He came to an open house that the student nurses had, and uh, I was trying to escape from someone else, and I said I had to work at the refreshment table, and I went down there, there was nothing I could do, so I tried to look busy, and my hair caught on fire, and Pat jumped up and put it out with his bare hands. And somehow the fire that he put out in my hair moved to my heart, and it's never left. There were some very hard times, especially when we were first starting out, and I had three children. The oldest was three and a half, and it was just a lot of work, a lot of sacrifice. I just thank them for the example that they set. And that's, I think, what is unique about the two of them. They both were willing to submit themselves to God. So they're a beautiful, beautiful couple together. God definitely knew when he put them together. Their passionate love for Christ, faith in his goodness, and belief in his creative power are the hallmarks of the Robertson family. Never left my first love. That was it.